the 400. That's what we're looking at. And you can see that we do expose the spinal cord and it's in here. So because we are a very safe protein, we have no concerns about that being in here. When it's delivered, the kidney is removed. You can see that it's been cut. And it's been cut by the inspector. That's part of the inspection process. I remove the jowl just at the ear dip, which is right here. And that's your jowl. If I took this jowl and I trimmed it of the uh, glands that are in here, and as it said, any excessively bloody portions, and then I remove the skin, this is what you would use for guan chao. That's, you know, your salted cured jowl. So it's the lower portion of the pig's head. It's left on the carcass. It does not go with the head. And in that meat buyer's guide, you will find a number for this. Everything that we're going to cut, you'll find a number for. And you can go by primal, which is the fresh leg, the loin, the belly, and the shoulder. The first thing we do, this is that lean portion of the diaphragm. This is basically like skirt right here. This is the diaphragm is the muscle that separates the thoracic cavity where the heart and lungs are from the abdominal cavity. And just so you know, there, um, some of the terms that we'll use are posterior, anterior, dorsal, ventral, and medial, which is down the center. So some of that may slip out while I'm talking just so I can orient you to that, those terms. The first thing we're gonna do is separate the ham, the fresh ham or the fresh leg from the pig. And the way it's done is this bone right here is called the H bone, A-I-T-C-H. It's the letter H, hip, spelled out, H bone. And the way this is cut, if we read the, uh, the um, description for the 401, the pork leg, fresh ham, is that it's cut with a straight line roughly perpendicular to the shank bones, which are right in here. This is the foot, the hind foot. This is the, this is the hock. And the hock is actually this joint. It is not this part or this part. This is a foot, this is a shank. The hock is the joint between the two. If you buy a ham hock, it is the foot and the, and the shank together connected by the hock and it would be cured and smoked usually. So it is the foot and then the ham. The shank bones are here, so if I want to do a line perpendicular to that, it would be at a 90 degree angle to these bones. And usually you're gonna get into about the fourth vertebrae here and make a mark. And then it says to make a cut past a point that is no less than an inch and a half and no more than three and a half inches from the anterior point of the H bone. So anterior means towards the front of the animal. So we're gonna make a mark at about an inch and a half. And we're going to lift up here this piece of flank from the belly which is called the boot jack. So I'm gonna lift the boot jack off and make a score this straight through here to remove the hand. And when you're cutting the animal, you'll see that uh, it shouldn't take a whole lot of sawing. I've seen a lot of videos where you, you see a whole pig with the head on and the first thing you see the guy do is he takes a knife and he cuts around the head and then he starts sawing away to take the head off. At that point, I shut it off. This atlas joint right here is the only place that is con the head is connected to the carcass by bone. You can pop that just like you take a chicken thigh from a chicken leg, it's that easy. So it can do one straight cut here, one straight cut here, and it pops right off. You'll see most of these cuts <laughs> That's it, that's all it takes for the separation if you're at the right spot.
And there's your fresh ham. So you can see where the separation is. So we'll set this aside and we're gonna go ahead and take the shoulder off and we'll cut it down to the primals and then we'll take each primal apart. The shoulder is removed from the rest of the carcass from a straight cut that is perpendicular to a medial line along the carcass. So it's just pretty straight. And there's, we count the ribs when we're separating the shoulder from the rest of the animal by counting from the front backwards. So that's the first rib right here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. There's 14 ribs. We're gonna separate this from a straight cut, which is at the second rib, the first is called a one or a two rib break. It's a straight line. Again, I'm looking at that rib. I'm gonna make a straight cut. And I'm just gonna separate the shoulder. The other landmark that I'm using when I do this is the elbow. I don't want to hit the elbow when I'm doing this, so that's kind of my bottom line. And I'm going to go through the rib, and then you'll hear I go through the scapula or the shoulder blade. I'm through that, and we'll finish that separation with that straight cut. And that's the shoulder separation. So this is the shoulder. We're going to set the middle, or the wing, aside. This is made up of the sirloin, the blade end of the loin, because we still have shoulder blade in here, because we cut that in half with this two rib break. And then we've got the ribs and the belly with that boot jack or that flank on there. So we'll set that aside and we'll take the shoulder apart. The first thing you do with the shoulder is you remove the foot and it's supposed to be at or just above the hock. So I'm gonna go just above the hock, make a straight cut around, and this is a four foot. Or trotter. Now I've got the whole shoulder the next step to the shoulder, because we have some ribs and neck bones in here, is that these ribs and the neck bones are removed to leave the butt portion, which is the upper part of the shoulder, that's a pork butt, and the bottom half, including the elbow and arm, is the picnic. So we remove these bones and that atlas joint. And there's breast bone in here. And that's your neck bones. You often see these smoked and for sale for soup. And what you've got left here is the butt and the picnic or a whole shoulder. I'm just gonna trim this up. And we're gonna take these cost cartilages off. The next separation would be to remove the butt from the picnic. And it's a straight cut right at this seam right here. And I'm gonna be on top of that scapula or that shoulder blade. So I'm gonna to have to cut through it. So that's your picnic shoulder. and that's your bone in butt. Now if I take this fat off of, and skin off of here,
That's a Boston butt. It has the bone in right here. That's the only bone in there is this bit of shoulder blade. So if I remove the bone, that would be a boneless Boston butt. But if I remove the associated lean and the fat cover above that bone, then we've got a CT butt. Cellar trim butt is from the old packing plants where pigs came in at the top and everything happened using gravity going from floor to floor. When you got to the cellar, that's when the most knife work was done. So that's why it was called cellar trim or CT. But that's your Boston butt. That's your picnic shoulder. This is either ground for sausage or it's cooked. This is the classic kind of barbecue cut for pulled pork and it includes the cushion is in here. Has anybody ever heard of a cushion? It's, it's a, it's a uh, triceps break eye group within the picnic shoulder that is very lean. They can remove it from here if they're going to bone this out for grinding. They'll remove that and sell it just for making pulled pork. And it's a raw material for pulled pork. So that's your picnic shoulder. And you can see that it's been stamped by a USDA inspector. It says inspected and passed. And it has a number on here, 20055. That's called the establishment number. That's the actual plant where this was processed. So you can always find where something was processed by that bug or that establishment number on any package. You can look that up on the website numerically, it'll tell you where that was from. And that's on any USDA inspected piece of meat. Now if we take the ham apart, the first thing we're gonna do is remove the tail. We're gonna remove this fat. And that would be removing all of the, any excessive fat to expose all of the lean from this area. This is your collar. So it would be skinning this down to there. We're going to remove the foot above the hock. There's your hind foot, and you can buy those separately. You can buy four feet or hind feet. Now we've got a shank. That's a whole fresh ham with the shank on. If I remove the shank, it's shankless, and that shank can be sold as a separate cut. What we would normally do at this point is just clean this up of any excessive fat and skin the collar, skin it down to the collar. Just to clean it up. But that's your fresh ham. If you skinned it, it's a fresh ham skinless, it's shankless, you can keep going and further processing it. When we take the other side of the pig apart, I'm going to take the ham apart to every single muscle within the ham and we'll look at it. We'll take the shoulder apart and look at all the muscles in the shoulder. But that's your fresh ham. So this is the whole loin or the wing with the ribs, the breastbone, and the belly attached. And the first separation we would do here is to separate the loin from the belly. This is the psoas major. Does anybody know what that is? Oh, come on. It's the tenderloin. Tenderloin is the only muscle that rides inside the abdominal cavity of the animal. So the tenderloin runs inside here. The head end is here, and the tail end is here. It runs from, from the, the wide end is at the leg side, and the narrow end is at the head side of the animal. And it rides right inside here. I'm going to go ahead and remove this so we can see it intact. Because when we cut the other side, we're going to cut right through this. And you'll see with most 
muscles within the animal that it doesn't take a whole lot of knife work to make natural separations. And that's your tender one. The tenderloin, the psoas major, it has a silver skin on it, and it also has a side muscle. You see this groove right here? That's the side muscle. I can pull that off. And, and if I removed any of the fat, lard around it from the abdominal cavity, this is a peeled side muscle off tenderloin. The language for that, this is the side muscle, so it's peeled side muscle off. That's P-S-M-O. And that's what you'll hear in the industry is a PISMO. Has anybody ever heard that term? PISMO, that's what it means, peeled side muscle off. It's just that clean tenderloin. So what we've got left here is the middle meat. And we remove this. I'm going to remove the diaphragm so we can kind of count what we're doing here. See what we're doing. That's the diaphragm of skirt meat. This is where that tenderloin was. So the way we separate this, if you can see in this end, we've got a natural muscle separation right here. That's where we're going to start this mark, this scribe mark. And it says to follow the natural curvature of the spine with a, with a cut. So I'm going to mark it right here, and I'm just following that down. That's where my separation will be. This is where it's fun with a uh, fun with a handsaw. Is what this turns into. Needless to say, this is not how you do it in the plant. This is done with a, uh, a laser light to line it up and a big spinning blade like a meat slicer blade. So now we've got the whole bone in loin from the blade end, which was near the shoulder, to the sirloin end where, the, where it attaches to the ham. And this is your whole belly. I'm going to set this aside. Actually, let's fool with the belly first. The interesting thing here is that we just cut these 14 ribs, actually 12 ribs, because we separated it at the second rib in half, right? So this is loin back rib. This is spare rib. It's all the same ribs. It's just the bottom half and the upper half. Loin back ribs is what the term is for these. Pork loin back ribs. Baby back ribs is a marketing term from ribs from Denmark because they, they slaughter their pigs at a much lighter weight. So it's a smaller animal, which makes a smaller rack of ribs, which makes it easier to put a whole rack of ribs affordably on the plate. So because they're smaller than what we have here, the term was coined baby back rib. So. When you talk about back ribs, it's back ribs, spare ribs. There's nothing else going on there. To take the spare ribs from the belly, we'll start here at the breastbone. We get under the, to the 14th rib. This is usually done with a hoop knife, which is actually a big knife with two handles. You just slip it right off. So that's a spare rib, and that's your whole belly. 
if I take the spare rib and I square it up on the, this end, if I remove the sternum and the costal cartilages where they're attached to the ribs, and I can just do that with a knife. you'll have the St. Louis style rib and the brisket bones. So it's basically a center cut spare rib that's been cut down to look like a back rib. That's a St. Louis style rib. If I separate the sternum and the costal cartilages and the brisket bones, these are called rib tips. Right here. Where Right in here, there are finger bones that run in between where this tenderloin was, right up in here, and where the loin or the longissimus muscle, which is that large muscle in a pork loin. Right under here, there are finger bones. So there are one, two, three, four of them. If I remove that loin from there, These couple of bones right here, if I remove them from the backbone, are riblets. It's the transverse process of the lumbar vertebrae. Sounds better as riblets, I think. But that's what it is. They're just these funny little, it's that piece that separates the tenderloin from the loin in a, in a T-bone chop or a porterhouse chop. It's that little goofy bone in there. Now, if I take this apart, I'm gonna move the belly. If I take this apart, I would take the sirloin off of here, which I'm going to use this as my landmark right here. See this little muscle in here? And I'm going to take this tip right here, and that's how I'm going to remove the sirloin. So that's your sirloin, end of the loin or the sirloin. That is your full rack, bone-in rack. If I remove the blade end, which is where this scapula is still riding up in where we left it here in the blade end of the loin, and I cut this down, I'm going to cut it at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. At the, I'm going to take this off right here, and it's going to give me an 11 bone rack. And that's an 11 bone rack. It's from this end where the sirloin removed to the 11th rib, counting from the posterior end, anterior. If I did an 8 bone rack, I would just remove three more ribs. And that's an 8 bone rack. And what that gives you is basically from here to here, where these ribs are, those are your rib eyes, and from here to here are your loin chops. If we left the tenderloin on there, it would have been here. If we left the tenderloin in there, these become your porterhouse and your T-bone chops, and these are your rib eye chops. So I'm going to remove the blade end and cut this down to an eight bone rack. And that's familiar, right? That's your center cut eight bone rack. Now if we cut the chine bone off, which is cutting the top of the spine off, like here, which I'm not gonna do with a handsaw <laughs> in front of anybody. Um, it would give us, and if I remove this right here, our loin back rib would be right here. 
And then we would have, if I remove the rest of these bones, which I will do, I'll show you the boneless center cut loin. And when you're doing this, you know, it's just like doing a fish. You just follow the bones. So that's our loin back rib and our spine. That's a boneless center cut loin. I'll cut this in half down the center where you normally would separate this. And you'll see that at this point, it's all longissimus muscle right here. That's why it's the ribeye side and the loin side. Here's the whole belly that we removed the spare ribs from. And to square this up for making bacon, this is the teat line right here. So we would remove the teat line with a straight line and cutting right through the edge of that flank, which are. And a center cut belly, when you get into center cut bacon, it's not going towards the middle here. It's actually making this more narrow. And that's what you're looking for for center cut bacon. This is the leg end. This is the shoulder end. This is the end that I prefer. And I'm going to show you what this looks like just in a cross section. This has some of that shoulder and the brisket meat in here. When you get down to the center, which if you called the center cut, you'd see that the amount of lean really starts to disappear. And then as you get into this end, I'll pull the blank off. This end just kind of gets all over the place in its lean. But you can see there's not much lean other than these muscles which are usually removed when you're processing it for bacon. But that's your whole skin on belly. And you can buy that skin on, you can buy it skin off, you can also get it single ribbed. Has anybody heard of a single rib belly? That's actually when you take these spare ribs from the belly and you cut each bone out of there and pull it out and leave all that associated lean on the belly. And that's a single rib belly. That's often what's used for uh, tronchetta di porchetta. When they make a porchetta out of the loin and the belly rolled together, they would single rib this out of there. So that is the entire carcass because the other side is a mirror image of this. That's the entire carcass and its main primals and subprimals. So thank you. <laughs>